Hi everyone, Phil from Tefa Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this from Aero Cooler. It's basically a water cooler with addressable RGB lights on it. It's the L120F and it's got a manufacturer's suggested retail price of £66.99p. Okay, let's have a quick look at this box. So it's the Pulse L120F RGB liquid cooler with RGB fan. It's got addressable RGB. It's by AeroCool. You can see a picture of what it is and so forth. On the side, you have got your different languages there. Uh, if they're any good to you. Uh, on the back, it basically shows you what it looks like. So you've got eight lighting effects via LED control button. So you can actually tap basically the water cooler to change the LED lights. The only problem with that is obviously you've got to have the side off of the case to do that. But Obviously, if you've got a motherboard what has got an RGB um, header on it, or at least addressable RGB header, uh, you will be able to plug it into that and then obviously run the software from your motherboard manufacturer to change the lighting. But if not, you've got to tap this. It would have been nice if there was some sort of little cable or something you could just tuck outside of your case or something which you could press to actually change the RGB lights on it, just in case you hadn't got RGB built on your motherboard. Uh, it's compatible with addressable RGB motherboard boards as I just said. It's got a addressable RGB fan as well. Goes on about the micro channel design with copper water block with testing that we'll find out how effective it is. The pump on this is actually built in or the impeller is built into the radiator rather than into the water block or the CPU block um, so that makes it a little bit different than most and it says high performance silent fans and so forth works basically with pretty much more modern motherboards uh, with the exception probably on there of your uh, Threadripper motherboards which I wouldn't expect this, this is a more consumer level product um, it tells you all about the thermal design limits like 200 watts made of copper, aluminium, blah 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 but that's all on there uh, the fan it says is rated between 600 and 1800 RPM just in case anyone is interested uh, but otherwise that's it for the box Manufacturer basically just goes on the website about comes with the eight LED effects. Uh, you've got that 12 centimeter addressable fan, which looks a bit like flower petals. Uh, you've got pure copper water block with micro channel design, pump coupled together with radiator instead of the block, balanced impeller for high quality bearings, allow for silent performance. Low density fin per inch radiator provides more airflow and you've also got high quality Teflon coating tubing that allows for ultra uh, low water loss. A unique flower shaped fan as well on there um, and as we said this little fan what's on there hard to see from there and this picture is probably a little bit better. It's more of an impeller. It just really symbols a flow it's not actually motorized or anything like that it's just showing you that you've got motion going around and it will light up probably a little bit um, depending on um, obviously RGB lighting settings okay so this is what you've got inside the box so first of all you've got your manual there which one side tells you how to install it in Intel or for Intel CPUs and I'm guessing the other side yeah is going to tell you how to do it for AMD it's all pictures pretty much, so uh, it doesn't really matter what language you're looking at, it should be self-explanatory. So that's pretty good. Next you've got these cables here, this is what you're connecting up to the uh, water block and so forth for power, RGB lighting and so forth. So you've got that there. You've got your back plate for looks like Intel only, this one, uh, which will obviously go on the back of your motherboard. These look like Intel brackets, so those will go probably on either side of the CPU, or should I say the CPU block. You've got some thermal paste, which is AeroCool branded. It doesn't say exactly what type of thermal paste, it's probably just their generic stuff. These fittings, I'm guessing, are for AMD. 
and then you've got all the extra fittings what you'll probably need in there to screw it uh, together. You've got the fan here which has got this flower design so it looks like petals, the actual blades itself. It's a, it's a strange design, I can't say I've seen it on anything else before so it'll be interesting to see how effective that is. So it's going to be quite interesting. Uh, it is an RGB fan as well, so obviously it's got your RGB connectors on here. Uh, so let's have a look. You've got a third one there. So yeah, you've got a male and a female RGB connection there, as well as your four pin PWM fan connector for powering the fan and so forth. On the back it's called, the model number of this is there if you need it for any reason, so if you want need to get another one. It's the TC1225PWM. Okay, so that should be pretty straightforward. With it being RGB, I'm guessing this fan sort of glows up with it being sort of a slightly transparent white um, fan. Let's have a look at the cooler itself. So you've got your radiator here. This is where you obviously attach your fan to. You could have it in a push-pull configuration. It's really up to you. So attach it to top, bottom. It does show you that in the manual. The actual impeller, which uh, basically pushes the water around, is actually built into here. So it's right here. Uh, it's sort of actually a slight cutout square there. And that's where your cable actually goes to for your uh, for the PWM on the motherboard. That is what powers it. So the power... So even though it looks like there's a fan actually in there, that's just for show, to show you that the water is actually flowing around and also this all lights up as well, RGB and so forth. Obviously this one it comes with a 120mm fan, I'm pretty sure they do other variations as well uh, for different sizes and so forth. But we'll test this in a few minutes and see actually how good this is and how it actually performs compared to like a, a stock cooler and something like that on a i7 processor. A closer look at the actual water block. You can see that fan there just about. Looks like it's slow free spinning. And on the bottom, obviously that's where you're going to be putting your thermal paste or at least putting it on your CPU and then attaching it. You'll need to peel this bit off here. It is quite a nice shiny base on there. It looks like it's full copper, but the surround does feel like plastic. Yeah. So the base is actually copper. The rest, as you can hear, is plastic on there and the, all the cable in and the tubes and so forth is all braided on there as well. So in testing, all our tests are performed on the same machine on an open test bench. This test bench does not have any updates or anything like that turned on, so it's not connected to the internet at all. All the programs we use, we use the same version for every test depending on the device we use, unless for any reason we need an updated driver to run something newer, which is usually rare. It's usually only in the case of stuff like graphics cards, you would need that. Each test is run three times and each time we run the test we run it for 30 minutes and we get the average from all the tests. For this testing we used an Intel i7-9700KF, a Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Elite motherboard, 16 gigabytes of Patriot Viper memory as well as a GeForce 1060 6GB graphics card. As this is a small cooler, we decided to put it up against an Intel stock cooler to give you a comparison to what you would get if you used an Intel stock cooler or a low-end air cooler. In this test, the machine was set at idle, so basically it was sitting there doing nothing and the fan speeds were set to 50%. As you can see, the temperatures are pretty much not far off the same. There's only one degree in it. And again, this is if the machine was sitting there doing nothing. In this next test, we set the fan speed again at 50%, but make the machine's processor run flat out uh, for 30 minutes, and then obviously take the average temperature. As you can see, the Intel stock cooler came out at 
three degrees uh, where the aero cool uh, water cooler came out at 72 so it shows it's able to cool down hell of a lot better than an intel stock cooler and bear in mind this is with the fan fixed at 50 percent fan speed we don't use auto speeds because that can obviously make the fan speed up or slow down depending on how hot it is we did the same test again with the idle, but this time with the fan speed set of 100%. Again, it was pretty much very similar again. The aero cool coming in 2 degrees cooler at 24 degrees Celsius. But again, this is when the machine is doing pretty much nothing. It's just sitting there with nothing running. In the next test, we basically make the machine run flat out yet again. Stick the fan speed all the way up to 100%. And as you can see on here, there is a huge difference. Nearly a 30 degree difference between an Intel stock cooler and the AeroCool water cooler. And the AeroCool water cooler is running at 52 degrees. So that is pretty good going in all honesty for such a small water cooler. In the next test, we overclock the processor to 5 GHz. That will make the processor even hotter, uh, so you will find the coolers struggle more so to cool it down. And it was actually that case for the Intel stock cooler. We couldn't, couldn't actually get the machine to do any of the testing with the stock cooler because it would just overheat. With the AeroCool water cooler, we were still able to run perfectly fine, and it was running as low as 57 degrees on average, which is pretty good considering you're overclocking a machine with a small water cooler, and it's one of the more powerful processors out there on the market. The decibel levels, so basically how loud it was. The Intel stock cooler, when it was running at 100% fan speed, was 58 decibels, where the aero cooler was running at roughly 55. So it was just a little bit quieter. Uh, the average room decibel level uh, in this case is 45.2. So this water cooler, is it actually any good? Well, think about it. It's a 120 mil water cooler, which basically means it's got a 120 mil fan on it. That's not the actual full size of the water cooler, but it's got some nice looks to it. So you've got that uh, uh, like little fan, or should I say impeller, what you can see on the actual water block itself. While it's only really there for looks and showing that the actual water's flowing through, it doesn't actually do any real practical thing like pushing the water around that's all done in the actual radiator area where the proper impeller is and the pump you've got that rgb lighting on there which is pretty good and that's on the water block it's got that sort of a ring effect which is pretty nice would have liked the fan to have the same sort of effect on the fan itself rather than being full rgb for the whole fan well saying that still looks pretty nice and it doesn't look out of place. Only side effect on the water cooler I found was because of the radiator having the pump built into it, it does make it a little bit wider so it might be a bit of a struggle fitting in some spots when most other radiators may fit fine. But saying that, we're able to overclock an Intel i7-9700KF to 5 gigahertz and it's able to cope with cooling that without an issue. To me that's a win-win especially when you look at the compact size. It's ideal for a smaller case or if you haven't got much room or even if you've got a limited budget. Shows that you don't have to go out and buy a big 360mm radiator when actually a 120mm one well in most people's cases will do perfectly fine.